Do some love for the cat people. I didn't think you left Warwick. I don't like to leave Warwick unless I have to. Bananas. <laughs> 75 yards from shore and come across a great white shark. 75 yards? He calls himself a Swifty. <laughs> Unbelievable. Every single day went and got hot wieners my entire senior year. Oh, yeah. You're not even qualified to vote on this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what the people think. They're trying to sell the house. Ding, ding, ding. Win a win a chicken at dinner. Welcome to episode nine of Shooting the SHT, Real Banter with Nick and JT. I am Nick. This is JT. And welcome to the show. Nate Dog on camera for the first time for our YouTube followers, all 39 of you. Uh, <laughs> 30. It's growing. Let's it's get it right. It's 32. Number. 32. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my apologies. It's a growing number. Absolutely, it is a growing number. And first question I have, John, is how does it feel to be the uh, now third most handsome person on the podcast? Oh, get <laughs> out of here! <laughs> Ooh, throwing smoke right off the <laughs> right, out of the, right out of the gate. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're all lucky to be as uh, well. You guys, anyway. Anyway, uh, introduction <laughs> to the show. What do we got? What's new? How's life? Uh, John just got news. Breaking news before the show started. He is a brand new uncle. So let's give a little round of applause to Uncle John. Hey, all right. Thank you. Yeah, we're about to go live and waiting. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. Please. please. <laughs> uh, what day is today? Wednesday. They went into the hospital Monday night. Oof. It is now 1.18 in the afternoon. Got the word as we we're about to go on. Uh, that Wells William Tatro was born this morning. So congrats to Jay and Katie. Congrats, Jay and Katie. That is super exciting news. Yeah. It's all healthy. Wells is doing well. Wells is well. Wells and is well. Katie is well. And Hudson's going to be very excited to have his new cousin. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, soon to be little Nikki will also have a new cousin. <laughs> so uh, very you're going to have to start being nicer to me if you, <laughs> you want to make a little Nikki push there. That sounds good. So what else is new? What's going on, uh, Uncle John? Who sings Uncle John's band? I don't know. Dead people. Why don't you? Uh... You have. We're really close, actually. <laughs> Um, so, grateful. so Nate, we used to have this game where Nick would annoyingly ask me who sang every single song, <coughs> and we got to that the point. Like a fun bit of trivia. I don't know yeah. if that's annoying. Yeah, uh, it, it we gets old. An office. It gets old after like four years. I it's assure. annoying at that point. Yeah. 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 Can you picture us sharing an office? Actually, <laughs> like literally a room about this size. We were. Uh, in uh, yeah, I'm literally room. watching you guys every week, just about six across from each other, and yeah. just just absolutely rip into each other. Now so they have to great. separate us across Do the you, office, five thousand square feet apart. Is we, sold, we sold a lot of real estate. We did. <laughs> <Sharing open office. laughs> He's your lucky uh, charm, and you move him halfway across the office. Exactly. Maybe we just need to go back to that. Solve Maybe all we the should. problems. Come on in anytime. Yeah. Oh, I, I'll good. go in my hammock. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever it takes. Excellent. What else is new? Nate, Nate do you want to introduce yourself? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're the new guy. I mean, you're the new guy. You're on I'm not camera. New. I've, I've been here for a couple weeks. First time on camera, though. No, but you have your setup going now. Yeah, this is getting pretty intense, y'all. Oh, what did we say? So we what said, did we say? You know, God. I ask him every time to it. turn the sounds off. And, and goes, every, every single, single time. time. Are you talking about me? Yes. Yeah, oh. you. Focus. <laughs> Do not disturb <laughs> until the end of this event. So Nate has his full setup there. We're very excited, very happy to have him on camera here, joining everyone. Again, all of our 32 listeners. You've been talking about my setup a lot today. It's making me uncomfortable. All right. So, Nick, <coughs> you have some news this week. Why don't you share what's new with you? Uh, what's new with me this week? I don't know. Hung out in the rain. It was kind of a blah week weather-wise, you know? Nothing too exciting going on. <laughs> what's it, huh? All right. <laughs> Nate, um, I, I wish I asked you to cue this up earlier. There was a sound bite from mm. our last podcast that made its way to the conclusion of a reel where our dear pal here said, you know, when I commit to something, I commit. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. he texted me on Sunday and said, yeah, about that. Um, <laughs> that tournament that I, I committed to and therefore roped you into, yeah, not going to happen. Uh, but why is it? Because you do have some exciting news. That, I do. That I, I uh, share. pulled the plug. I made a uh, rash decision to get my wife... A birthday present, and we're going to go on a vacation in August across the pond over to London. And uh, we're going to see one Taylor Swift. So uh, I believe she will be very excited. My children will be, will be very, very excited. I can't wait to tell them. That's going to be uh, quite the moment. And I'm excited to see London. I will certainly be excited to see uh, Tay Tay as well. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not as much as them, but it will be fun uh, and a great way to uh, end the summer. So I'm very excited about this. It's very exciting. I'm excited for you. Yes. I will say I think you did fib a little bit there when you said that you won't be quite as excited as your kids. 
I don't um, think I'll be as excited as my kids. I will definitely have a good time. I'm excited to see it, but I think that's a little bit of a different level. I'm just, I don't know about that. Just do me a favor. Be keep it in your conscience. Okay. Don't please don't stiff arm like your kids, any kids out of the way, you know, to get up front or anything like that. Just just beware. What do you think I am? An Neanderthal? <laughs> what's, what's going on? When it comes to T Swift, just you know, oh, I know John. how you get. See, this is what we were talking about earlier. He just struggles with the shots. He just can't get the good ones in. But um, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. When are you? Uh, when when are you telling the kids? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yes. This is gonna be like Christmas Day for them. It is gonna be like Christmas morning. That's be, pretty. That's awesome. probably better than Christmas morning. So Angela's actually. birthday is like Christmas for the kids. Uh, I guess it's going. Is it to usually? Be. Like that? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> usually I get terrible gifts, so I can't win. Um, one year. All right. Careful. I, I'll be careful. So one year uh, I got a gift, and now my wife likes egg whites. Okay. So I oh, found no. on Amazon an egg separator, and I got her an egg separator, and it wasn't her only gift, but it was part of like a gift package. <laughs> and I got my my I got roasted. <laughs> and- what? <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm glad Nate and I have the same look on our face. You got your wife an egg separator. It wasn't for the her only birthday. gift. It was part of like a lot of gifts. Was that like her big gift? No, absolutely not. What was, was the big gift? I don't even remember. The, but. the big gift was she got to make him eggs that morning. <laughs> <laughs> but no matter what it is now, Christmas, birthday, whatever, it's like, oh, here comes Dad. We're gonna get an egg separator. <laughs> It's a whisk this year. Is this okay. the kids' joke? Oh, yeah. They, they yeah. just roast you. Everyone does. That's yeah. awesome. It's great. And so now I go to the other end of the spectrum. We're not big gift people. I'm not good at gifts. I don't really like gifts. She doesn't really like gifts. We don't, we're not like material well, people from that standpoint. She doesn't like the gifts that you give her. Typically. If it's an egg separator, I wouldn't, I don't blame her. Yeah. You probably come around the corner with a wrapped box. She's like, oh, God, what is it this time? <laughs> Cue the fake smile. And so to wrap this whole story up, <laughs> Tomorrow, as of this recording, is my wife's birthday. Hmm. I have been looking at ticket prices for a long time and trying to look at different shows and different travel arrangements and different options. And tickets in a nice section (coughs) became available much less than what I had seen in recent past or that it's available as of now. Mm -hmm. This was on Sunday, this past Sunday. And I said, I have to buy these because it's much less expensive than what I've been seeing. Hmm. So I Clicked the button, threw up in my mouth a little bit at the same time, <laughs> clicked the button, bought the tickets. <clears throat> and the problem was, is we have joint bank accounts. Um, and mm. so I don't have any kind of way to, you know, you know, hide, hide money yeah. at all. And it's probably so a good thing. I, I knew credit cards, you get a notification right away. So I didn't put it on the credit card. I went the PayPal route, hoping it just went through my bank account saying PayPal. And even that, she'd be like, what did you spend Put you that kind PayPal. of money on PayPal? <laughs> yeah. uh, and it didn't. It said StubHub UK, the charge. Mm. And she noticed it like two days uh, before her birthday, unfortunately. So we've had some interesting conversations. <laughs> Hopefully she's excited. And, I think and she's gets coming more around. excited as yes. time gets closer. I do. It will be a great time. It'll be a great experience. I'm sure we will look back on it uh, with fond memories for the rest of our lives. So I'm excited. Let great. that be a lesson to husbands everywhere. You got to keep a uh, offshore bank account. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For uh, if, in case you want to spend exorbitant amounts of money on. I'm a not concert. sure what's a faster <laughs> way to divorce an offshore bank account or, or doing what I did, <laughs> but <laughs> dropping. Yeah, yeah. Or the faster route, just get her an egg separator for her birthday. You could do all three. Yeah. What's wrong with an egg separator? You know, I mean, there's not a goddamn right thing about wrong an with an egg, egg separator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you open a little carton of egg whites and they go bad so fast, but yet if you just had regular eggs and you wanted to separate them, bada bing, bada boom, you got you got you got egg whites. Yeah. No problem. Anytime you want them. Yeah. I thought it was a genius gift. I, was a I think gift. I think it's a good like stocking. Stuffer. That's essentially what it was. Yeah, yeah, it was a stocking yeah. stuffer. What, or, were, what or was the main uh, course? I don't remember because mm-hmm. the egg separator <laughs> stole the show and I never lived it down. Stole the show in an unfortunate way. It might have been Christmas. I'm not sure if it was Christmas or her birthday, but that it was, was her mm-hmm. big Christmas gift. Was an no, egg? No, it's never been the main gift. It was always like an appetizer. I feel like an egg separator should be one of those where you come home on a, like a random Tuesday and you're like. Hey, honey, I know you usually have this problem with the eggs. I was thinking about you today, so I found this egg separator for you. Like, <laughs> not a not a holiday or a birthday. Anyway, I think that's enough for an introduction. So, well, hold on. I'm going to go a little <laughs> off, off agenda here because we were chatting before. And uh, before we get off Tay Swift and before we get into uh, the meat and potatoes of this pod, um, we were chatting before about T Swift and the economic impact that she has had. Yes. And we've seen a lot. We've I think we've talked on here. 
First uh, episode, I believe. Yeah, we've talked about how where she has had stops on her tour, she's had a great impact on the local economy, and she's done a lot of things. But then we were we were half joking while we were having lunch about you know where people putting these tickets and concert tickets and plane tickets and hotels on credit cards and this and that. And while she's helping those economies, we heard on a panel yesterday from another local agent who seems very knowledgeable about uh, the economy and finances, saying that there are a lot of indicators of a recession coming. And could a world full of Swifties on such a historic tour, being maybe reckless with some spending, could Taylor Swift... And I love T-Swift. Don't get me wrong here. Love her. Big fan. But at the same time as she's boosting these economies, could she be causing a recession? Short answer? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> did, I, did I take a long time to land the plane? You did. It was it, good. It, it was good lead-in. It honestly. really was. Yeah. Nailed Dramatic. it. Nailed it. But short answer, yes. I uh, just Googled this. As of May 18th, Swift's influence is so profound in that the Eras Tour generated $5 billion in consumer spending oh, in just Jesus. six months. Oh, my God. I'm responsible for about half of that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> $5 billion as of May in wow. six months. It's the GDP of, like, a small country. Honestly. Go T-Swift. Absolutely. Here's another question. How does the Eras Tour affect the economy in Europe? The demand that has been created for hotel rooms and flights across Europe could push up prices that feed into each country's inflation rate. Central bankers are sensitive to even minute charges in the data as they try to distinguish one-off effects from lasting ones. So she is definitely controlling the world's economy right now is really what it boils down to. I think we're on to something. Here. I've never seen a movie about an apocalypse caused by a pop star. <laughs> are you uh, are you thinking about your next script over there? I, I might use it for inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. We should All move right. on. Let's move on. We've got a short window here for the pod today. We are on a strict timeline. We have to plan other events as well. Let's jump into industry news and starting off with Zillow's July market report. It just dropped yesterday, July 23rd, I believe. The July market report, is this the jolt that the housing market needs? A few key points from their article, the CPI impact. July's consumer price index saw a year-over-year -year increase of 3%, leading to a significant drop in mortgage rates that was slightly below their projected uh, percentage increase. This drop could stimulate a late summer surge in the housing market, potentially Increasing sales activity if layoffs remain low. What was that? Interesting sound choice. It's my goddamn alarm. Sorry. <laughs> That's what you wake up to. <laughs> oh man. Interesting choice. That is what I wake up to. It's, it's from the Oak Arena of Time. It's very from Zelda. Yeah. Oh, is it? Is yeah, it yeah. a big Zelda guy? Well, you remember Zelda on the N64? Oh, Legend of Zelda. I remember yeah, on yeah. the original NES. I'm a oh, bit like Link you. from the Past and all oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's what I wake up. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very soothing. I would never wake up. So I like to be woken like James Bond likes his martini, shaken, not stirred. Oh. <laughs> I like to be punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you still don't get up on time. It's unbelievable. I was three minutes late this morning. I apologize. You guys still been doing that? The 5 a.m. club? We oh, are. you didn't hear about that? No. Well, I didn't hear about... I feel like you're going to say something uh, maybe scathing about Nicholas. Not, what else not is Not terribly nailed? scathing. Let's see if you can nail this one. <laughs> so... He, he has a tendency to be a minute or two late in the morning, which is fine. I'm I'm used to it. It's, it's fine. <laughs> I think I've been you um, a couple of times lately. A couple of times since we started in March. Yeah, I think probably a handful you've beaten me. Um, but anyways, this morning, there was one time where once it got to like 5.18, 5.19, I was like, oh, no, he's sleeping. And then, if, yeah, he woke up at like 6 o'clock and texted me like, oh, my God. Uh, so this morning, 519 hits, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. It was 518. There is no <laughs> shot he's coming on today. But I left it. I was going to give him until 520, and then 519, all of a sudden, a little boop, and there he is, just eyes <laughs> shaking his head like. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like just, uh, yeah, good timing on that. So so you guys do the, can you explain to the listeners? Because they don't know what you're talking about. I think you we've spoken about this club? in the past. We do. Huh. 5 a.m., we get up, and we hop on the treadmill to try to lose a couple of LBs because we both could stand to do so. Mm -hmm. Or not good stress relief, good way to start yeah. the day, get yeah. get our mind in the right place too for for a hard day's work. We are not self proclaimed Greek gods like somebody else on this podcast. <laughs> I, I that's John called me a Greek god. 
Didn't you say you run around like a Greek no, god? No, he, he many times has referred to himself as a Greek god. I, I don't think the words have left my mouth. <laughs> what actually the origin of that was? I said John once he's up when he's once he's in shape with the treadmill and wants to go outside, he can go for a run around the block, pop his top off like a Greek god, just all oiled up. <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, that's great." And then it became that I was the Greek god, which you know. That's for you guys to say, not for me. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Got to love so, it. Zillow, July market <laughs> report. How do we get here? Uh, <sighs> all right. Anyway, affordability challenge. They also said the average U.S. household needs 35.4% down to afford typical home payments. That's, That's pretty a wild. big number. Absolutely. People are a little over leveraged here. The figure is even higher in some markets, especially in California, while more affordable options exist in cities like Houston, Cincinnati, and Pittsburgh. What's that, the AFC South? West? North. Is well, north? Houston's in the South. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh are AFC North. Okay. I thought they Yeah, okay. Yeah, Houston's an Indies division, right? Yeah. All right, anyway. Um, yeah, so 35.4% down. That's a big down payment. That's a big down payment. And how many buyers do you think are putting down 35.4%? Not that many. We you don't know, have that data, but I would certainly anticipate that you're in the low single digits. The The challenge I see with this number is a lot of first-time home buyers don't have that number. No. A lot of first-time home time buyers. third-time buyers don't have yeah. that number. Mm. But a lot of... Hang with me for a second. Okay, I'm hanging. A lot of first-time home buyers... Or the more three and a half, five, maybe ten percent down. You certainly have first time home buyers who will put twenty percent down. But that lower down payment is oftentimes your first time home buyer. The people who can afford to and often will put more, not all the time, but many times, those who can and will put over thirty percent down, I would say more times than not are people who are selling one house. And purchasing another. Rolling that equity over. Which we're seeing less of now because people aren't giving up their earlier price and rate. So it's kind of creating this, this sticky position where what people have to do, they're not doing or can't do. Sticky, icky, icky. Sticky, You icky. are right, John. It's yeah. getting hot in here, is it? It's getting hot in it here. It is. Actually, so it's take quite warm. all your clothes. I am getting so hot. I want to take my clothes off. And with that, we're back. <laughs> We ready to go? Yep. All right. Discussion points from this. What do you think, John? The potential for a late summer market surge due to dropping rates. What do you think? Implications? Is it happening? What's going on? I think there is a good chance of it, um, which I you don't see now uh, being in July. We've actually seen the opposite. We've seen it slow down, less listings going on, and those that are on tend to sit a little bit. However, with the rates coming down and talk of more rate drops potentially in September, I think we could see a bit of a surge in August and September. I lean more in September, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been slow. People are on vacation. It's summertime. Mm -hmm. I know some of our listings have really been getting uh, less and less activity. Need to be priced really well to mm -hmm. certainly create those situations that we were so accustomed to with multiple offers and yep. high demand. So uh, I would lean more towards at this point in our local area anyway. More than likely a you know fall early fall, you know I think that what is it, what's the end of summer September twenty something? yeah end of September yeah. Yeah, I would say late summer <laughs> yeah. early fall I would say late summer early fall yeah once kids get back in school usually we see a little bit of an uptick there so I would anticipate the same this year. That's not to say that you cannot still get a uh, wonderful price. In great demand during the summertime, uh, there are buyers out there, always 12 months a year. But Absolutely. certainly, they tend to get a little bit more foot traffic once school yeah. goes back. By the numbers, still a strong seller's market, and it all comes down to pricing it properly. Don't Couldn't agree more. Great point. All right. Thanks, all right. thanks for the input there. <laughs> I was kind of left on a... I thought you were going to bring more. I thought you were going to say something else, and I was letting you breathe. I was giving you the space you needed to expand upon that. I appreciate that. <clears throat> no problem. Nate's going to have to cut that out. Why? I've never seen two people, two people more in love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious. Like it's like a will they, won't they? You, you keep doing this to me. I'm well, you cue this. it up before the podcast, Nick. Can you gaze into John's eyes so I can line up the camera? <laughs> JT, gaze over to Nick so I can line I up the camera. I say, give him an eye line. I've never once used the, <laughs> the word gaze into his eyes. <clears throat> Next report: Realty.com, June 2024 housing report. Also just came out. Uh, some key takeaways that I had from this one, inventory growth, the active listings increased by 36.7% year over year, marking the eighth consecutive month of growth. 
New listings rose by 6.3% compared to last year. That's a big number, increasing 36.7% year over year. Um, goes back to what we were just talking about, and I know the Northeast is is not like most of the country where we had those bidding wars longer. Uh, a much, much of the country was seeing listings sitting. I've heard listings sitting for months in other parts of the country. But that's a big number, almost 37%. And when you also factor in that new listings rose by 6%, that will show you there the difference of how many have just been sitting for that to accumulate. 100%, John. Definitely agree. I'm looking back right now trying to find some information. I sort of should have been more prepared for the podcast. But all right, locally, uh, this time <laughs> last year, we had 833 homes on the market as of July 20th. This year, we've got 1,016. So certainly seeing similar you know, increases here yeah. locally. Uh, we have seen an increased inventory both year over year mm -hmm. and a substantial increase, about 60% since April, beginning of April or so. So uh, we are seeing much of the same. Buyers have an opportunity. It is not as competitive as it has been. If someone went to the sidelines, it may be a great time to re-enter the market with rates being down a little bit, mm -hmm. more inventory, more to choose from, less competition. Uh, certainly, it is a good time uh, to potentially look back out, or not look back out, but get back out in the market, mm -hmm. look at homes, and you might just find that one that you've been waiting for. So. I think if if a buyer's on the sidelines, now is a great time if you want to buy this year, because right now the listings are sitting a bit. You may have the opportunity to negotiate the price down, not even be pestered by sellers about waiving your home inspection or appraisal gaps. You know, reserve your inspection. Have the appraisal with no gap, negotiate the price down, as opposed to if we get that rate cut in September, all the buyers are going to come back out, the frenzy could pick up again, and you may regret missing out on this window here in August. Absolutely. Next, home prices. The median home price remains stable na nationally at 445 but the price per square foot increased by 3.4%. We are seeing much larger price gains here locally, John. Tell me a little bit about what you're seeing uh, in the local marketplace. In the local market place you know as you just said prices <laughs> you don't know this number off the top of your head no i do but i was basically repeating you? what you just said and i knew i was going to get ridiculed what was the price increase in june compared to last year june over june june 24 oh i don't know the percentage but i know the median price is five uh 469 the median price went up to 494 in june rhode island single families compared to 460 last year you got to cut this out. <laughs> oh, my God. What the f <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, I watch. I have to watch. You guys know, like, because you said, I don't know if you'll remember. I watch every second of footage. Do you? I, I have to. Yeah. I have to. I have to. I feel bad for you. No, it's, it's fine. It's part of the job. You know? Not only are you in the room, but you actually have to rewatch this train wreck. I have to watch it many times. I over. have to say, I listen to this while I'm driving. Do That's you? usually when I listen to it. You're a psychopath. <laughs> I thought you guys did. So then I was like, oh, I should probably be plugged into this. Plus, I want to I want to give it an extra view. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, but I'll listen to it as I'm driving down the road. And I'm like, we really cracked me up. Because I'll be, just, <laughs> I'll be driving down the road just laughing in the car by myself. It's because I cut out all the bits like uh, like this. Anyways. This could stay. I think oh, all this can uh, stay. I think yeah. all seven of our fans would appreciate it. So. <laughs> No, but honestly, I, I know we're not, you know, Joe Rogan by any stretch, but we actually have had quite a few clients comment oh, yeah. on our antics here from this podcast. For uh, sure. On listing appointments, buyer yeah. appointments. So tell I them to they, share, tell, yeah. tell them to spread the love. Like, share, subscribe. That's right. But to your point, we have seen. What was my point? Uh, mm. Things are rising locally. That's right. Here in Rhode Island. We have seen quite a bit of that where in most of the country, these numbers that you had here were national. Locally, as I said before, in the Northeast, we've seen that seller's market really continue for quite some time past the rest of the country where you had the bidding wars, prices continued to go up. Um, so that's why one of the reasons why we continue to see those numbers increase for locally sure. here in the Ocean State. Next is time on the market. Homes spent an average of 45 days on the market, two more days than last year, uh, but still quicker than pre-pandemic levels. Uh, the most recent stats that I've run, I ran... Wasn't my was now so um, is it just inventory availability? Is that part of the reason why it's going up so much here? I think it's a combination of both. I believe it is uh, <coughs> an increase in inventory, mm -hmm. 
and uh, affordability challenges mm-hmm. with increasing prices and uh, rates where they're at. You know, rates dipping a little bit has certainly helped, but I believe it's a combination of those three factors. I think people are, um, you know, it's like we've seen debt going up. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of leading indicators on this potential recession. Credit card debt is up. Auto yeah. loans are in default. I just think, you know, people are, you know, the economy is taking a toll. Out there. It's, it's, hard, taking it's a toll. hard out there yeah. for a pimp. Um, well, and, <laughs> all right, pimp daddy. So think about it this way. You start looking for a house two years ago, yeah. and you have a budget in mind. You know where you're comfortable, and over the course of those two years, make a decision. I'm just no. Prices go <laughs> true. Prices sure. go up, but some of these people probably made ten or fifteen offers. No, I know. In the meantime, prices continue to go up. You throw some T Swift tickets on your credit card. <laughs> now you have it's that hanging problem. over your head. Not you, but in general. You know, someone throws tickets on their credit card. Maybe they maybe yeah, they booked it in Italy. I would have liked the points. You know, somewhere over there. But I knew that was a yeah. dead giveaway to Angela. So like, She gets the notification. But anyways, so my point wasn't. is, <laughs> you're looking, prices go up. Maybe you buy the T-Swift tickets. Now you have some more credit card debt. All those things start to factor in. And you can't compete or can't offer at all on a home that would work for you today compared to when you started. And I think that's caused some buyers to pull back and sit on the sideline. For sure. They also mentioned some regional trends. Inventory growth was highest in the south and west, with significant increases in Tampa, Orlando, and Denver. Mm. Yeah, that was more my question, Mm. was the comparison between Rhode Island getting so much higher compared to nationwide. Oh, there are certain pockets (laughs) of the country, mainly southeast, Florida, Mm -hmm. South Carolina, extreme buyer's markets, to Mm -hmm. the best of my knowledge. I don't study Mm -hmm. those markets, but from what I've heard from other agents around the country, extreme buyer markets where you almost have to give a home away right now to sell Mm -hmm. it. So Mm. certainly, uh, you know, things have changed and they can change quickly. Absolutely. All right, wild card. Let's get back to some fun shooting the SHG stuff here. Hypothetical question of the week, my new favorite segment on the podcast. Mine too. Um, Question number one, which company would you choose if you could be the CEO of any company? Who wants to go first? Nate. I came up with my answer when I when I found the question. When I found the question, I uh, very quickly had two thoughts in mind, and I, I quickly... Flipped over to my second answer, and I still stand strong. Go ahead. No, I'm going to let somebody else go first. All right. Fine, I'll go first. <clears throat> I would be the CEO of um, A24. A24 is a uh, independent film distributor. They have come up with some of the best films of the okay. last decade. Yep. Um, they started off with, um, I believe they started off with, like, you know, a couple hedge fund guys. Okay. Who just started kind of toying around in the film industry, and then... They quickly start to build up a little bit of a catalog, and now they are up there with they're become, they're starting to be up there with like Paramount, Universal. They're one of the big studios they built at this. from the ground up. Um, they have some of the best movies that have come out in the Uncut last Uncut Gems. Yeah. Was, I love that movie. That movie was. Oh, great. oh all right. Hold on. Hold yes, on. Yes. Great. We're going to so talk. Good. We're so going to talk about this. Are I we cutting like into the first wild card for this, or what are we going to push this to wild card two? We're talking right. about the first question still. Okay, then after this hypothetical, okay. then we're going to get into Uncut Gems. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm so, very excited about that. He got yeah, stuck. Yeah. Nate, you haven't heard Nate and I debating this across no, the office all week? I think it's a fantastic movie. All right, we're going to get Angel into Angel couldn't it. even watch it. She was so anxious. She had to <laughs> leave right, 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 right. Okay. Save it. Save it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, the uh, Hereditary, Midsummer, um, they're, they, some of the best... Um, new filmmakers, directors, uh, creatives that are coming up now uh, outside of the studio system, A24 is is kind of their um, giving them a chance. So they're very, it's a very exciting company. I'd love to work for them. I'd love to work with them. And uh, I think that if I were to find a kind of a niche in that industry, that would be kind of A24, Magnet. Those companies are, are two of the best pockets in the industry, in my opinion. So, yeah. Love it. Good answer. Uh, the Craft Group. <laughs> okay. Own the New England Patriots. Okay. Free massages. <laughs> oh, wow. We went there. Oh, hey. <laughs> Tom Brady would be so mad with you. Um, my answer was NetJets or Wheels Up. One of those two. I first thought ones about that. Came that. To mind. I thought you know, about that. I love that. to travel. love to be able to say, I'm going to take this private jet wherever I feel like going right now. And I think that would be the spot that I uh, would lean towards. I don't know the CEO's net worth. I don't know how profitable those companies are. But I think from a Benny standpoint... Uh, having a, a fleet of private jets at your disposal, 
Um, I think that's pretty cool. That's oh, I think of, that's yeah. a good answer. It Super actually cool. crossed my mind. Did I almost it? said something similar. Yeah. So uh, that was my answer. So that's my my first answer to the hypothet- hypothetical question number one. Of the All week. right. So, um, Archive Gems. Yes. Uh, is that why so, you're going to the second question? Because you cheated and read ahead? No, I'm not going to that. I'm not going to yours yet. So last week, Nate and Anthony here were talking about Uncut Gems. Tell me I have to watch it. And they were laughing and making fun of me, saying it's going to cause me severe anxiety throughout the whole movie. But it's so wonderful. So Friday night, I get into it. And I spend like all, what is it, two hours and 45 minutes watching this movie. It was, well, a, it was a, a good movie. It's a fantastic Had movie. Had me on the edge of my seat. I was very interested. Yeah. I watched it until like midnight. I wasn't tired. You couldn't go to sleep. I was plugged in, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. Great movie. When you got to the end, did it not piss you off? Like, I just spent two hours and 45 minutes invested in this, and you left me with no answers, mm-hmm. no conclusion, no answers, just a whole barrel of questions. It's kind of like The Sopranos, how that ended. I mean, yeah. come on, you got to leave yeah. some kind of something up to the imagination. I right? don't like it. <clears throat> I, I, my response was, um, you know, because a lot of the movies that I watch are like that, they kind of leave, leave off ambiguously, you know. There's a lot of great movies that have a very straightforward path. There's mm-hmm. a clean cut ending. Mm-hmm. Those are great. You know, like uh, you got like a Jurassic Park. Good guys win in the end. You're mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. That was great a movie. movie. Great movie, by the way. Have you, you watched it, John? Jurassic, Jurassic Park? Park? I don't know. You're, you're yes, very I've weird. Well, you, ha- you haven't watched Back <laughs> to the Future. So, I mean. Oh, ooh, we got we to gotta fix that. We're on Uncut, Gem- Uncut Gems. Yeah. So, anyway, so uh, there's a lot of movies that, and then, you know, you get to the end and it's over. Mm-hmm. That was a movie. Great. A movie like this. It makes you think a little bit longer. You, the movie ends, and you're like, "Well, what happened? I don't know." It kind of makes you entertain some other possibilities. I find that more interesting. I think it, if something that provokes thought and makes you kind of dwell on it and think about it afterwards, that's cooler to me than a movie that is just kind of dis- like a disposable pleasure. I love those movies too, but I thought Uncut Gems was a very good way to end it. I thought he got kind of what he deserved. He had been he had been really raising the stakes the entire time. He'd been playing with fire. And it makes sense. You know, that's kind of what would happen in the real world, I would think. Um, so I thought it was a really good movie. The Safdie brothers directed it. They also directed a movie called Good Time, if you're into that sort of style of uh, anxiety-inducing cinema. Does that um, one give you an answer at the end? Uh, it is more of a um, uh, more of a, a bittersweet ending, not as quite as uh, rip the rug out from underneath you ending. But okay. there's so many movies that I, I love that are have very similar, where it's like they leave you kind of questioning things, and that's okay. I, I agree. One of the better movies I've watched in years. <clears throat> yeah. And it's old at this point. What was that, three, four years ago? 2019, yeah. I think. Yeah. I remember watching it. I think it was like Thanksgiving Eve or something like that. I watched oh, it with Angela. Boy, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. I couldn't sleep afterwards. <laughs> I was just like on edge. I was up to like three in the morning. It was wild. <laughs> All right, hypothetical question of the week, numero dos. I always go to Spanish at some point. <laughs> All right, uh, would going out to eat or to see a movie by yourself make you feel uncomfortable? No. No. I think sitting at a... <laughs> you want to add some color? Terrible question. I'm going to no, add one. some color. <laughs> sitting at a table in mm. a restaurant, yeah, I'd feel like a weirdo, but like, can I go sit at the bar? Yeah, there was no caveat there. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Would it make you feel uncomfortable? Uh, I think uh, eating, you, no. I, I have no problem eating out alone. The movie would make you feel weird? I think I'd be a little, uh, I think I'd feel strange walking into a movie theater by myself. You think so? Well, I, I used do. to go all the time. I've myself. never done it. I yeah. mean, and I like doing certain things by myself, particularly I, I don't mind golfing by myself. I mm-hmm. love golfing with my buddies. It's a great time, but I also don't mind just getting out there and walking and being amongst nature and hearing, you know, me alone with my own thoughts. We should go do to the bathroom. Social do you go to the bathroom by yourself? Uh, sometimes. Okay. Um, and <laughs> I do also enjoy skiing by myself, actually, at times. Not always, again. Oh. But oh. I, I just, I usually things in nature, I like to be out by myself, and I just can think sure. and relax and observe and mm-hmm. just kind of... Feel the moment, you know? Um, but going to a movie where you can't talk anyways, no, you don't want to do that alone. I don't. I'll okay. tell you what. <clears throat> if you go to a movie, especially since you're a dad now and you're, your alone time is probably precious, I would imagine I'm you don't get a ton poor. of... No. Yeah. You know, do you get a ton of alone Not time? alone time. Um, I mean, I have a lot of personal... Like, I play a lot of golf, but I mean, Yeah, yeah. That's not alone. But you're with people, uh, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I am a person that pro- I, I really like my to be, to be by myself sometimes just to think I like to read I like to kind of do like a lot of solitary uh, pursuits go to a movie theater by yourself and 
if you just watch a good movie and you sit there, you don't have to. One of the best parts is you don't have to think about if the person with you is going to like it or not. Yeah. You can just focus on the movie, kind of veg out. It's almost sure. like a meditative process. Yeah. Get some popcorn, some candy, just hang out and, and watch a good movie. Nothing wrong with that. I like it. Um, I don't do it as much because, you know, Lauren and I kind of like the same movies generally. So she's You're in love. Yeah, I'm very much in love. That's great. Um, yes. And so she, sweet. <laughs> she has a great taste in movies. She loved Uncut Gems, by the way. Uh, even the ending. Um, it was good until <laughs> the end just made me angry. Rate uncut gems. <laughs> How many gems? <sighs> Out of five gems. Seven. Are we going on a zero to five scale? I was going to go zero to five. Oh, we always go zero to ten. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, oh. oh. That's how we roll. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. This is how we roll. Seven. Seven? Seven out of ten. Nine one. Great movie. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Seven. <laughs> I couldn't bring it home. All right, let's speed this up because we are supposed to be in another meeting in four minutes. Well, we've already dipped into Zillow's market report, Realtor.com's market report. Let's look at a recent report from Redfin now, specifically regarding mortgage rates and a housing market um, summary. That's what it says. That didn't really flow well in that sentence, but we can dive in regardless. <laughs> uh, increased purchasing power. Uh, interesting. So Zillow had said you needed what? How much more? A, a down payment of about 35 36% to make it affordable, yeah. make a home affordable. Yep. They're saying that, um, thankfully, due to a drop in mortgage rates, that has increased buyers' purchasing power, allowing those with a $3,000 monthly budget to afford homes priced around $447,750, up from $425,500 in April. So even just that small dip from mm -hmm. low, low sevens to six, eight, five, six, eight, somewhere in that range has increased the buying power for those buyers substantially. So this kind of circles back to our point to buyers that mm -hmm. if you had been on the sidelines, you do have a bit more buying power. You yeah. can maybe find something a bit more affordable than what you were able to find a few months ago. And sure. you're facing much less competition, which leads into our second point. I'm just on a roll. Keep In rolling. Inventory growth. Uh, the supply of homes for sale is rising. New listings up 7% year over year. Slightly different data. Very similar. Um, but that was what Redfin is saying. And they're saying that despite declining mortgage rates, nationally home prices remain high. But the combination of lower rates and increased supply presents a favorable buying opportunity. Right in line with what we already talked about. Anything else to add on that? You done? We're just talking about <laughs> <laughs> this is very the redundant. The moral topic. of the story is if you're a buyer, as Nick said, rates are down, supply of homes is up, you have more purchasing power, take advantage of the opportunity right now. There could be a little surge in, in activity late summer, early fall. Take advantage of the time right now. Absolutely. And I'm going to go real quick on to another topic that I did not put on the agenda. Realtor.com came out with top home features swaying buyers' purchase decisions. A new study suggests suggesting and touting that these property upgrades in your listing description help achieve a quicker sale. Any guesses on the top feature that will in help? In a listing you? description. To what it says. Hmm. This is based on an analysis of 112,456 home listings on Zillow. Finished basement. Nope. Vanity lighting. Number, number one. Stop it. Number one, vanity lighting. A bunch of narcissists in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Swifties, am I right? Second, stone <laughs> tile floor. Next, <clears throat> open shelving. I thought open shelving was going away. Yeah. I don't know if it's going away, but it's definitely not new. I don't like these. Exposed brick wall. I have a massive exposed like brick wall in my house that I, like I want to get rid of. My wife wants to keep. Modern lighting, artificial grass, ch chandelier lighting, shed, pergola, subway tile, butcher block, and built shelves. What year is this from? <laughs> it's a study. 1983. From front, shut the front door. <laughs> is It's front door. Um, sale date, 2023. Really? Yeah. This seems like a 2018 type. Hey, I can't argue with data. Uh, which kitchen features do you think sell the home the quickest? Number one. Is this multiple choice? No, it's just anything that might be in a kitchen. Anything in the kitchen that's going to help it sell quicker? Yes. Is this 2024? Yes. 2023. 2023. I swear to God, if you say beverage center, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good guess. I'm upset. A good beverage center. White. 
kitchen. Beverage center is not even on the really? top 18. <laughs> I'm thinking like stainless steel appliances, <clears throat> granite countertops, the typical blah, blah, blah that you That's put in every listing. You put that in every listing description, yeah. but it's it, what kitchen doesn't have that right now? Yep. Number one, butcher block. Mm. Ah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of butcher block countertops. I agree. Second, recessed lighting. Then another one I think is getting outdated, farmhouse sink. Well, recessed oh, I lighting. actually I have a farmhouse sink. I Did like I my tag? farmhouse. I mean, they're, I like my farmhouse. They're <laughs> nice, but like recessed lighting. Again, what year is it? <laughs> yeah, uh, bring it up with the front door. Marble right. countertops, granite countertops, waterfall countertops. Under I hate waterfall cab, uh, countertops. Don't like that. What Not is a, a waterfall? Countertop? It's when the countertop goes along the side as well, so it's a waterfall effect. Oh no, <laughs> no. Nate just wants some nice butcher block in his farmer's sink. I like the marble. <coughs> I like uh, like white kitchens. Yeah. I do too. We yeah. are on the same page there. Which bathroom features will help your home sell quicker? Vanity lighting. I was hoping you had somewhat of a mem- uh, <laughs> recollection of that conversation. Vanity lighting is number one. Stone tile floor. Glass, glass shower doors. Glass screens. Glass screens? That's what it says. In a bathroom? Yeah. What? The f- bathroom. <laughs> 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 Explicit on this, jeez, <laughs> John. <laughs> it's a family podcast. <laughs> he was slow. Not anymore. Uh, which living? What room? is a glass screen? <laughs> hey, what is that? I don't understand. <laughs> can you add that bleep after? <laughs> I can bleep whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it in post. <laughs> What is a glass screen in a bathroom? It looks like, kind of like a glass shower door, but it's a very small picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got to go. Did you just snort? I didn't. <laughs> Nate that did. was me. Yeah. Which living room features will help your home sell quicker? Vanity lighting? No, we just said that. <laughs> Open shelving. Which yard features? Artificial grass was number one. That uh, seems weird. strange to me. Yeah. Then Outdoor shed, kitchens? Pergola, doghouse. Fire pit, outdoor lighting, built in BBQ, summer house, patio, solar panels. That's another topic for another podcast. <laughs> uh, which green features will help you sell your home the fastest? Don't say solar panels. I did not say solar panels. I didn't say anything yet. Is that your <laughs> guess? <laughs> I, I think it's going to be the answer, but I disagree with it. It's not. It's in the top five, but it's not number one. Ugh. Right. EV charger. I'm not, I don't think a lot of these apply to Rhode Island. This might be a. I can see that Vegas, Arizona, yeah. California, mm-hmm. SoCal, that kind of stuff. So that's the last topic. We got to wrap this up. We're five minutes late for another meeting. We appreciate your time. Any conclusions, John? Do you want to rate the podcast? Do you want to? I would love to rate the podcast. I think we had some good banter. I think we got back to our roots a bit more, which was real estate. I think we've lacked that in the last few. I think it was a good combination here. Uh, Nate had his camera on, so I'm going to give it an 8-2. It's good. Nate Nate did not like it, apparently. (laughs) Nate doesn't like when you get mad about shooting the SHT when that is the name. Why did I get mad about it? I just I gave it an 8-2. I'm going to give it an (laughs) (laughs) 8.15. Why? Uh, Because I didn't like your last comment. (laughs) You better have your bleep ready. I'm going seven and a half. Ooh. It was mid. Yeah. That's what the kids say nowadays, wow. right? We rushed right. through it. We did. But I think it's decent. There was some good banter, some laughs. I enjoyed it. So hey, All right. Thanks for listening. Hit that to subscribe the button. Out there. We'll see you next Appreciate time. It. Thank guys you so talking much. over each other so much. Seriously, will you just let me breathe? <laughs> Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. That's a wrap on today's episode of Shooting the SHT. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss a future episode. And if you enjoyed this content, please share it with others and leave us a rating and a review. Buying, selling, or want to connect with Nick and JT? Visit Slocum Home Team on Facebook and Instagram or slocumhometeam.com. We'll see you next time.